Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mount Studio. And in the last video, we built this modal pop-up here, gave it a blurred background, and we got some text boxes on here. And we were able to dismiss this the modal pop-up by either clicking the background, this blurred part, or by clicking sign up. But we have one problem. When the keyboard comes up, it covers up the password field and the button. We need to be able to fix that so when we click on the password field, the keyboard isn't blocking it. And also when we put letters in there, it, you can't see it, <laughs> but the letters, they're not uh, password protected, meaning that they're not showing the little dots instead of uh, the letters. So let's fix that now. On text fields, they come with a bunch of different customization options for their input source, which is the keyboard. So for this, if we want it to be a password, we can come over here to the attributes inspector for that text field and we just click on secure text entry. And that's also going to solve part of our problem. It's going to solve two problems actually. Take a look. When I click sign up and put my cursor in there, notice it doesn't have this the auto correction part like it does right here, the predictive part. So that helps a little bit. Now we can at least see the password and when we type things into it, it shows the dots instead. But it's still we still can't click the button. So what's a good way to fix that? And also another problem that we have too is we can't, there's no way to get rid of this keyboard. Um, maybe we want to get rid of the keyboard and then be able to just see the button so we can click it. But let's fix this first. So you know with, with this blocking the password fields still, it's hard to click in there and to then be able to see it and type in. So what we're going to do is probably the easiest solution is we're just going to move this this pop this model pop up up and you do that by offsetting. So right now it's set to be centered, uh, but if we give it an offset or just basically change the constant, we can move it upward. So I bet we can move it up like probably like 35. And it still looks good. Let's go, actually, let's just go a little bit higher. Let's go to 40. There's another way we could have solved this too. And that's if we can put this whole uh, modal pop-up inside of a scroll view. So in that way, when the keyboard comes up, we can scroll up the, the modal pop-up as well. And then you can see the whole thing. That's a little bit more complex. And maybe I'll create another video to, to demonstrate that. But for now, we're just going to go with the simplest solution. And another thing too is we're going to move this up so it fits on our smallest phone that supports iOS, the latest version of iOS. I'm not going to worry about the iOS, I mean uh, iPhone 4S, because that can only support iOS 7.1 or something like that. So we're going to stick with the iPhone SE. And we know if we get it working on iPhone SE, if we move it up far enough, it'll work on all the other devices because they're much taller. So let's see how this works. There we go. This is much better. But I type in here, and then I can easily click on that sign up button. But, you know, we could probably even clean this up a little bit more because there is a lot of space in between these controls. So let's change that. I want to click on your stack view, and we could probably just lower this spacing a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. And then we're just going to shorten up this view by changing this constant. Uh, let's try 10. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, that should pretty much give us what we want. Now, there's another problem, which is being able to dismiss the keyboard from your, when, once you're on this last text field. And for that, we're gonna do two things. Now, I remember that when the uh, keyboard was showing, it was showing it uh, the return button. It doesn't really make sense for this. We don't really need a return button uh, on, the, on the keyboard. Let me just show you here, just so we're clear. Yeah, right here. The return really doesn't do anything. You type things in, hit return, nothing happens. So let's change that to a done button. And you do that by, first you have to click on the text field, and then you can change the keyboard uh, information uh, over here in its attributes. 
So instead of a return key, we want to change it to a done button, which is right here. And how do we make the keyboard go away when you click that done button? This, it's a little bit funny. Uh, I'll, I'll walk you through it and how it works. But basically what we're doing is we are going to implement a function on the text field, on uh, the UI text field. And for that, what we have to do is we have to make our uh, sign up view controller. We have to make it implement the UI text field delegate or it has to be a type that conforms to the UI text field delegate right here, protocol. So if you, if you control click in there, you can see it's a protocol. And if you don't know, if you're not too sure about how protocols work or how uh, delegates work, I have another video that describes this easily. Yeah, with many examples so you can finally get it. But this is a common pattern. The delegate pattern is a common pattern inside of iOS. And so here, these are all of the uh, functions that we can implement in the inside the UI text field delegate. And the one that we're concerned with is text field should return. Where is it? Text field should return. Here it is right here. And look at this. Called when the return key is pressed. We're, now the return key we change to a done button, right? So basically what happens is when we click on that done button, this will get called. The text field should return. So let's go back. And now that this conforms to the, uh, now that the view, this sign up view controller conforms to the UI text field delegate, we can assign that to our text field which we don't have an outlet for. So let's add that. Okay, I want to add an outlet for this password text field. Make some space. Let's call it password text field. Okay. And in our view did load, every text field has a, a delegate property. Uh, there it is. That was weird. It didn't show up at first. And we're going to make it self. So basically, this view controller conforms to the UI text field delegate, which is what this delegate here is. Yeah, which I can't get to. Okay, see it's a UI text field delegate. So it, it can only take type of UI text field delegate, which our view controller now is because we inherit this uh, protocol. So we just have to implement that one protocol that we're talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come here and it's this one right here, text field should return. I'm just gonna copy that make it easy. And there it is. Text field should return. And we want to dismiss the keyboard, right? So there's no, you don't say anything, you never interact with a keyboard directly, it, it seems. What you do is you just tell the text field um, the password Oh no, yeah, yeah, that you can just use this text field that's passed in. Okay, the function we want is actually this one right here. Resign first responder. What, is, what does that mean, resign first responder? Even if you read this message down here, probably a lot of this won't even make sense to you. Notifies the receiver that it has been asked to relinquish its status as the first responder in its window. If you're coming from different programming backgrounds, you might be more familiar with the word focus when, a text, when the text field has a focus or some control has the focus. That means it's the thing that's active on the window. Well, your responder is a lot like that. The responder object is the thing that has the focus at that time. So when I'm typing on the keyboard, well, who's receiving 
those those letters that I'm hitting, it's the it's the text field. And the text field is what's responding to events or clicks or touches on the screen. It's it's receiving them and it's putting in letters from the keyboard. So it's it's the receiver and the responder. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're kind of like a synonymous, right? So right, so whatever has the focus is receiving events. The if you have a UI view, like you know when we click on this uh, when we click on this button, that button is the receiver of the click. It's receiving the click and it's and it's executing this this function right here. So in that case, it's the receiver, and it's responding. It's it's receiver and the responder. It's responding to uh, the uh, the click. Now in in iOS, I, I don't know if I'm spending too much time describing this to you guys. I, I don't know. Uh, hopefully this helps you understand what first responder is. But there's there can be many different responders. So when I click on something, not only did the like if I click on this text field, not only did the the text field receive that touch and put a blinking cursor in there, but the view itself received a touch. And so there's a whole chain of responders. So when you, you know, first the, the text field was the first responder, and then the view was the second responder. It recognized that you touched the screen. So you can have a whole chain of responders. And so that's where the term resign first responder comes from. And it's basically saying no longer be the first responder. So it's going to remove focus from that control. I know that's a lengthy explanation, but I hope it helped. Okay, resign first responder. Oh, and this uh, looks like it returns a bool, so we'll just return. There it is. Uh, what should we return? Let's take a look at that again. Okay, called when return keys press, return no to ignore. All right, we're going to return true then. Okay, let's see how this works. focus in here so this is the first responder now you know and as I touch anything this receives those touches first and puts in letters and when I click done it's going to resign this text field as the first responder so that blinking cursor will no longer be there there you go so that's pretty easy right just took a little bit of explanation which I probably spent too much time on okay so everything's working just the, just the way we want it now we come up here, we can put in a username, fog. We can put in our password here, and we can click sign up, and it dismisses the modal pop-up. I hope you enjoyed this series and learned some good things, and you learned something about the first responder and dismissing the keyboard. Uh, the approach we took was very simple and easy, and maybe I will make another video to show you the optional way to handle the, the keyboard. Normally, because if you have, if I have many text fields going down, what the method I use of just moving this modal pop-up toward the top uh, won't work. I'll have to scroll up the whole thing. So maybe I'll make that video for this modal pop-up. What I'll do is I'll, I'll alter it and add more fields, and then it'll give it a, a better reason to move it up. But just moving it up the way we have now works works just fine. All right, thank you very much. I hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up if you do and consider subscribing. Bye.